In 2011, Giorgio had his daring exhibition on the toilets in Plymouth Barbican. Some of his work was influenced by his old photo books and the artist Robert Lenkiewicz. Thinking back, thinking of you Summertime, think it was June Laying back, head on the grass Chewing gum, having some laughs You made me feel like the one You made me feel like the one Drink your way ahead of you Sleeping in the back of my car
That you make in your eyes Cause I fantasize Deep within the lies Every night I see in your eyes That you fantasize All the time I wanna hold you tight And make you see tonight It's alright I've been on holiday I was talking all the way to you Cause every fascination Comes with a price in your heart And I Give you time Cause I Give you time
This is Jojo in 2011. Jojo is a photographer and filmmaker and also a theatre film producer. He wrote a play on Robert Lenkiewicz, The Man in the Red Scarf. He's also made uh, two or three photo books, Monosterio, which is a nude book, and Plymouth Unveiled, which is another nude book, all shot in black and white. Uh, I wouldn't do this for everybody, you know that. Thank you, Jojo. So you're Jojo? Yes, I'm Jojo. So what's this gallery been all about? The gallery was an opportunity for me to do something I've been dying to do for 15 years, 20 years, which is to produce photographs of my work on a very large scale. I thought it was out of my reach because I, what I really wanted to do was cover the side of buildings and things with, with my work. But uh, I didn't realise that for a few quid you could actually cover the side of a, a bit of a building, which is what the toilet gallery was all about. Latrine's a good play. Say that again? Latrine's a good play. Ah, the latrine, yes. Or the book. So when did you, uh, when did you, when did you put the exhibition on? I, I had a little rolling exhibition. I put up one image after another for several weeks. Yeah. And then very uh, irritatingly, as soon as they went up, some fucker tore them down. <laughs> So, you've done an awful lot of other projects as well. You're quite prolific in what you do, aren't you? <laughs> aren't, yeah. aren't you, really? You could say that, or you could say I'm easily bored. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I suppose I'm a Renaissance man, sweetie. Yes. And I, can, I have tried many different uh, things. And you produce how many books? I've got three, three, well, three and a half books of photography at the moment. Right. So, do you get the, uh, the last half book, half price in these shops? I say half because it uh, it was a kind of personal project. What I did with the half was I photographed using my mobile phone everybody who I had coffee with for a year. It was right. called Coffee with Jojo. It was kind of like a personal project and I didn't put it out into the shops. So it exists. Is that coffee with or without sugar? I well, that was their choice. <laughs> right, okay. So um, um, your first book was Plymouth Unveiled. It was. What year was that produced? Uh, that went on sale in 2000. And that was a very popular book, wasn't it? It had a lot of naked people in it. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? Or uh, Plymouth people as well. Yes, 100 Georgia. Plymouthians photographed in the nude, either in their homes or in their favourite locations around the city. Yes. Shots at about 8 o'clock in the morning, some, some mornings. Uh, often earlier than that. I because like, when like you're, you're, you have sorry. to be like the SAS, if you're photographing somebody very early in the nude, in a kind of very public space, you've got to be in and out, and then in and out, and in and out, as quick as possible, as early as possible. I remember me being photographed on the, the old ABC car park at 8 o'clock in the morning after having a bottle of wine the night before. Yes, I... I a CCTV camera outside the Theatre Royal across the road. The memory of photographing you in the car park has long been uh, something that haunts my dreams to this day. <laughs> So I, re I really like the cover of that book, actually, the, uh, the picture taken in Matt Batten. Thank you. What's this, is there a story behind that? that you no. No, I mean, what I did, I, I, I worked collaboratively, so I simply worked with my uh, people who had agreed to say yes to being photographed, my sitters, uh, and I worked with them to find poses or places that were comfortable to them, and uh, then when I'd done that, I went ahead and photographed them. Well, thanks for waving at me. You're welcome. And the, uh, the, the second book was Monosteria. The second book was Monosteria. That was um, different to the first in two ways. It was for either single or couples, so single people or couples, and they were all photographed in my studio. I had a studio at the time. Yes. And um, that's how that one differed. Again, a hundred naked people, though. Uh -huh. So, what's... Seeing a theme here? Yeah, I can... Well, a bit like my themes, really, but my, mine's uh, very one-sided. 
The difference is that my last book, um, Remembering Robert, also yes. had a hundred sitters, uh, and this time Robert. they all had their clothes on. So who's Robert? Robert Oscar Lenkovich, who uh, was an artist who was based in Plymouth and died about 10, 12 years ago, at least. In 2002. There you go, 10 years ago. Yeah, 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, so I brought out a book last year, uh, 2010, um, in which I photographed a hundred sitters posing with their portraits, and uh, each of them commented about why the painting was made and what their relationship to the artist was. And then the, two years before that, I created, wrote, directed and produced a theatre piece based on his life as well. There's an awful lot of politics gets involved whenever you mention the word Robert Lenkovitz. Uh, not you as a person, but anybody in general. Yeah. Everybody has different views. It's entirely his fault. Yeah. He was a very charismatic man and he was able to make everybody believe that they were the only person who he would trust with this particular secret. And then he'd go and tell another ten, careless fifteen was people. Busy. Indeed, careless. Uh, and but not careless. I mean, he he just no, he's pretty, he was he just kind of produced in people. Just playing on words there. It's he, those, uh, calculated whispers. Yes, but he he produced <clears throat> a, a a great a bond with an awful lot of people who all thought they knew him and the real Robert on a, per on a personal level. Yeah. And he boxed himself in. Uh, and very few people knew the real Robert, and yeah. so there's a lot of politics between that's not what Robert would have wanted, or that's not what Robert was like. Um, and I mean, for the for the play, I interviewed 125 people who knew him in, in yeah. all different capacities. Can I talk about that in a second? I mean, when I oh, yeah. when I talked about to Robert openly, um, you know, everything I've said has been factual, but uh, uh, you you, uh, you think by people that have left statements. Uh, that I uh, was coming from a different um, direction altogether, and, well, and, and, and it's exactly what you're saying. That's my Everybody point. Knew him on a personal level. Uh, well, uh, he he did. was capable of being very many different people. Yeah. So, for example, I have spoken to women who have told me how he t said to them, "I love you," and I've spoken to other people who have said those words would never come out of his lips. Yes. I've, <clears throat> there are many examples like that in, in which. He presented different sides. Well, the statement that came out within the press, in the in the in the, in the Herald, for publicity, probably, was saying he couldn't understand a man that stays uh, with a woman more than a week. He, he'd get bored. Yes. Well, uh, I don't think he would mind being uh, accused of being a hypocrite, because although he was very promiscuous and had many lovers. He also had many um, lovers who he maintained relationships with for, for decades and decades. So, yeah. you know, he would always say, given a choice of two things, take both. So what about your play then? How did that come about? I decided... It came about when there was very little of Robert left. The Lankiewicz Foundation was tied up because his estate hadn't been settled, so they had no money and no teeth, couldn't do anything. That took about ten years to sort out mm -hmm. as well. The museum had just returned the painting they had of him on loan, and all his murals were fading. And I wanted to do something to celebrate him. And at the time, I had my theatre hat on, as opposed to my photography hat, and I decided I'd, I'd uh, create a play. And I raised money, and it was a professional production that went on for a couple of weeks on the bar. And it's full every, every evening, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's... it's um, and you come from the theatre background as well? Yeah. From Liverpool? Yeah. No, I was actually born in Plymouth, but I've worked in Liverpool, with the every man up there. But uh, I, uh, my background, I trained as a theatre director, and then I got into photography, and my latest evolution, uh, I'm teaching myself to be a filmmaker. And you, well, you, you've got a good background to that because you've done some television. Yeah, I was a TV presenter for three years, mm -hmm. doing late night, disgusting, debauched stuff for ITV. But it worked. Happy memories. <laughs> so what was that called? I did a series called The Summer of Love, I did another series called The Nether Region, and then I did a few one-off documentaries as well. Uh -huh. So it's given you a good foundation to develop that and take it further? Uh, I enjoyed um, sitting in, I mean it's easy to stand in front of a camera and talk and walk. Uh -huh. A lot of people can't do it, I can do it. Um, there's my dog. Um, he probably couldn't do it, but you never know. Um, and uh, the foundation, no, I mean, it, it, like many other things, I was a columnist for three years. That and the TV both were luck and a little bit of chutzpah, yeah. rather than desire. Being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, and not being afraid. If I was going to give anybody a bit of advice, is you're responsible for making your own luck. Yeah. So, you know, the TV's, my whole TV career, 
began because I rang up some production companies and said I have a good idea for a documentary. It's me. As everything else is, yeah. it was very controversial yeah. series. Yeah. And you, uh, what sort of, what was the, uh, the main feedback you got from, uh, from it? Well, the documentaries, uh, the two main series were exploring sex and sexuality in the southwest. Yes. And looking at strange and peculiar uh, tastes. Uh, uh, and another um, thing from Robert is that I don't give a shit about what other people think yeah. uh, or feedback or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> it is irrelevant to me whether you like me or, or not. So, but most of the negativity comes from hypocr hypocrisy and, and uh, people with hidden agendas anyway. And those who don't understand, yeah. yeah. You know. That's what I found. Uh, you know, uh, when I've had criticism, it's always come uh, definitely from people that have had more to hide uh, or more issues over themselves than anything else, which well, is very sad. The simplest you know, solution is just to say, fuck off. I do. So, what's your, what, what, what have you got on the go at the moment? Uh, okay, well, I've given myself a two-year period to teach myself how to be uh, a filmmaker. I'm teaching myself how to shoot, direct and edit by doing. I've done about 16, 17 documentaries since January this year. We're now in December. Uh, I've, got, I've been doing short documentaries. I'm about to do some drama. I'm going to make a series of silent short films uh, and I'm going to make a couple of art house videos and then I've, I'm probably in September going to do a, an MA in contemporary film practice at the University of Plymouth just because I love education and I can't bear to be away from it for more than 15 years which is how long it's oh, been. Oh, they expensive courses. The MA is four and a half grand over two years. Yes. I'll sell the dog, it'll be alright. <laughs> you must be barking. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jodie. Okay, have a happy day. No, and you take care. Goodbye. Bye. So I was in one of them. I was in Plymouth Unveiled. By the book and see me nude. With a hangover from hell from red wine. This has been a Chris Summerfield Media Production. You can contact me, sponsor me and support me through PayPal at ChristopherSummerfield at gmail.com. Thanks for watching the video.